the male suicide question is is something I wanted to touch on because it's headlines wise, it's like it's the largest killer of men in between a certain age of young people to probably young to die. Um, but it also seems that maybe women attempt at higher rates. Would you be able to clear up that kind of information for me? Um, so the yeah, so basically the it's often called the, you know, it used to be called the gender paradox. And it was this idea that, it's an idea, this fact that um, men in the UK, for example, three quarters of all suicides are by men. In some age groups under 50, depends on which year you look at, but suicide is the leading or second leading cause of death in young people, both young men and women, I think under 34, leading cause of death. Um, but if we look at non-fatal suicidal behavior, it tends to be more commonly female than male. Now, there's lots of potential explanations. And, and so the bottom line is we don't know for certain why there's a, such a stark difference. And um, because there's also cultural factors, because that, that ratio, that male-female, like three to one that you, of male suicides to female suicides, it's, it's in Western countries like um, obviously, the UK, United States, Australia, you have that huge um, differential. But in Asian countries, it's less of a differential. But usually, in nearly every example, there's still more men than women die by suicide. And part of the explanation for that is because men tend to use more lethal methods of suicide. So sadly, they're more likely to die. Yeah. But there's also issues, I think, around um, the what services are available for men in terms of are those services from people, men are vulnerable, accessible. There's something definitely around help seeking and our ideas around masculinity and seeing help seeking as a weakness. Um, and there's issues also about male's relationship with alcohol. We know that yeah. uh, obviously much more likely to die by suicide, or most people, or not most, but a lot of people who die by suicide, there's alcohol obviously involved or a history of um, alcohol uh, problems yeah. from alcohol use. So the short answer, it's complicated and it is this combination of method selection, sort of these social and psychological and cultural factors, as well as in this changing this idea around what we mean with masculinity, what it means to be a successful man. And I think in, in recent years, the female role has become better defined uh, than the male role. And I think we haven't, I think, I don't think we supported our men, our young people and men in, in, in that transition. So again, my message would be, it's not about blaming men. It's about saying to ourselves, well, okay, what do we need to do so that we live in a society which values men and, and encourages and changes our conceptualization of masculinity? Because not, but I think we often hear about toxic, toxic masculinity and masculinity is often demonized. So I think we need to re, re, rethink that relationship. Um, yeah. And so it's a much more constructive thing. So men are much more likely to seek help and, and feel... Um, be, be, I will better be seeking help and knowing how to do it as well. Yeah, definitely. It's something like masculinity and the gender roles in society is something I've only kind of just switched onto. And just the other day, I saw a male article headline of a male article um, saying like woke builders now talk about their feelings at work. And it's like, well, if you're going to start calling people woke builders, they're not going to keep talking about their feelings yeah. at work and, and we're still going to have these issues. So yeah, because that was this week, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I saw the headline. It was like the last couple of days. Yeah. Yeah, so. it's a uh, typical typical male. And um, and I guess as well, I've just started reading a book called The Transgender Issue, and I'd, I'd just love to know in terms of like marginalised groups, um, is it really dire in in those scenarios as well? Absolutely. The the, the short answer though is most marginalised groups have increased rates of suicide, increased rates of suicide attempts and increased rates of mental health problems. But um, but I think the, the other challenge we have is what we often describe as intersectionality mm -hmm. is when you're members of multiple marginalized groups. So obviously you could be from a more socially disadvantaged background and from a minority ethnic background and, um, and basically be gay or mm -hmm. bisexual or trans. <clears throat> And I think that, so I think there's a lot, so we have a lot of work to do. And, and the, again, the difficulty we have is, so we, we've understood the risk. We've understood the risk for years. And, and trans trans is obviously a, a, a population which is really in focus 
at the minute, and rightly so, so it gets more attention and gets the support, these individuals get the support that they need. Mm -hmm. But we haven't worked it yet, I think, how we deal with that, uh, basically combined risk and, and making sure services are tailored and the yeah. needs of those people are tailored on out there. Yeah, I definitely, I, I think the services, from what I've read in the book so far, it doesn't seem that there are many services dedicated, which obviously causes issues with like homelessness and yeah. um, like interation chip abuse. It, it, the list sort of goes on, but it's, it's, well, I mean, it's not good to know that it's uh, like disproportionate then, but it's, it's nice to know that fact. Um, there was one last thing I wanted to speak to you about, and it was the small acts of kindness, which I've I've been following on Twitter for the last last few weeks, and I've seen that a couple of times. A small acts of kindness, one of the best and least effortful things we can do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, although to to prevent suicide um, is complex, right? So, without a doubt, when we're thinking, we're working closely at the minute, for example, with the Scottish government as we devise. Uh, Scotland devises its new suicide prevention strategy and action plan, and, and, and it's at all different levels of t challenging stigma, improving services, um, uh, improving education, a whole range of things, media reporting. And so, so it's important to recognize it is complex, but that doesn't stop us from recognizing that every one of us can play a role in suicide prevention. And we often talk in the suicide prevention field as suicide prevention is everyone's business. And part of that mantra is to help people understand that small acts of kindness, small acts of compassion, small acts of connection and reaching out to others could be life-saving. And the book I talk about a couple of people over the years I've met and that small acts have genuinely saved their life because what we know with somebody who's, in, who's suicidal is suicidal thoughts, we often describe them as wax and wane. They come and go in high levels of intensity, and low levels of intensity. And what you're trying to do is in those moments of high intensity, you're trying to ensure that person is kept safe. And, and to do that often, we talk about safety planning, a way of getting somebody to identify the warning signs that they're Suicidal thoughts might be escalating and then ways of keeping themselves safe, either in distraction techniques or reaching out to others. But in, the same, in that same way, a small act of kindness could be interrupt somebody in that moment of crisis. So anything you can do which interrupts somebody and makes them feel worth, worthwhile, recognizing that their life and they are worth living, and um, I think are so important. And like uh, the example I gave in the book and, and a campaign actually that the International Association for Suicide Prevention did, um, which is an international organization which, of which I'm president, that we did a couple of years ago was this Step Closer campaign. The whole idea with the Step Closer campaign was recognizing the importance of these small acts of kindness. And I could be a smile or it could be just lifting the phone or sending a text or a WhatsApp to a friend or I had a tweet this weekend, obviously Father's Day or whenever mm. it was uh, this weekend. And Father's Day for many can, is a really difficult time, especially A, if you've either lost your father or if you've a father, if your father have lost one of your kids or a relative. Mm. And but it's just that idea of just connecting because we're 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 social beings and no matter we all obviously like our own space at two different amounts. But that having just some sense of connection, because we know that when the, somebody's acutely suicidal, they're, we often talk about this tunnel vision or this cognitive constriction. You can't see alternatives. You don't think you're worth it, worth it, and you think you're a burden on others. So these small act of kindness of either reaching out to somebody, a smile, just engaging someone in a conversation, I really, really encourage it. You'll never you'll, you won't offend somebody by just smiling at them or reaching out and send yeah. a message. And I think, so I would really urge people to do that. And then the other thing sort of related to that, Ed, is it, is it, I really encourage anybody, if you're concerned that a family member or a friend or a colleague is suicidal, ask them, be direct and ask them, because you're not going to plant the idea in their head. But as I said, at the start of this podcast, it could be the start of a life-saving conversation. And the number of people I've known over the years, you've asked that question and the person that asked it 
thinks if it, if it wasn't for that being asked, they would be dead now. And I've asked that question myself. So I'd really mm -hmm. please encourage people to do that. But it is difficult. And I talk about how you might do that a bit in the book as well to try and give people support about, because it is difficult. It's frightening, especially yeah. if somebody comes back and says, yes, I am suicidal. And I suppose the message there, if somebody does say I am suicidal, it's then trying to contain that person, validate what they're saying. Don't dismiss it. Don't try and minimize it. Just say that must be difficult for you. Let's can we co contact a GP or another health professional or somebody else, another adult if it's if it's not an adult you're talking to, to try and then hopefully get that person the support that they need. Yeah, I think that's a really nice note to end on there because I was going to ask what can people do if they are concerned and and you've just covered it. So what's um what's coming up next? Are any any more books to come out? I, I imagine you said quite a lot in <laughs> in this one. I really enjoyed it, by the way. I haven't I haven't said that yet. I know it's an award winning book, but I thought reading about suicide would make me pretty sad. Um, it was actually a really enlightening book, and I'm really glad that I've read it. So thank you very much for uh, writing it, Rory. No, great. Uh, yeah, no, because that's exactly what I'd hoped is it. Because it is a difficult and dark subject and something I was uh, dealing with every single day. Mm. Well, I was trying to convey it as a message of hope, even even for hope for those people who've been bereaved by suicide. And we can't bring our loved ones back, as well as those obviously who have been who struggle to stay alive daily. And sadly, there are too many who do struggle to stay alive. So it is trying to convey hope, but be practical and also help people understand this complex phenomenon that that, that often, if you haven't thought about suicide, it's difficult to make sense of. Um, in terms of, so I have always ideas for another book, but I haven't put them together yet because I'm still recovering from writing this book and um, I've just recovered from COVID as well. And um, I mean, because this day last week, I couldn't speak. My voice oh, wow. hadn't come back yet. But yeah, and then we're all, we all, we're always on going to work, research, because obviously that's at the heart of that's my bread and butter, so to speak. So if anybody wants to know more of what we do, they go to our website at suicideresearch.info. There's podcasts and research papers and lots of other resources. So I'd encourage anybody to do that. But thanks. Thanks for having this conversation there. No, it's amazing what you do. Thank you, Rory. Okay, look, all the best. Have a great day. Cheers.